Welcome back to the Listen Show. This is episode number 12. Today we are going to be talking about bass. Very important, very integral part of music. So a couple of questions we have to ask ourselves first. What is the function of the bass? So the first disclaimer is that I am not a bass player, so this is just how I see it. But uh, as an individual instrument, one of the most important roles is emphasizing the impact points. The impact points, as I see them, are the points where the bass plays the root chord, which is usually, which usually results in the chord being the most impactful, or the part where every instrument plays the same notes and the bass is under, adding to the body of the track. The notes in between impact points are more or less just steps to get back to the impact points, and most of the times will melodically set up the impact points. Next, the bass can contribute melodically or like a counter melody. And lastly, the bass contributes to the groove. I don't know if I've said this before, but it's extremely important that the bass is in the right octave. It's in the right place. It's not too high, not too low. If the bass is too high, it will sound thin. If it's too low, it will be too rumbly and almost inaudible. So keeping the bass in the right range is a a key to getting that full, big sound, cinematic sound. Next question is, what makes a good bass line? And again, I'm not a bass player, so this is all just my opinion. All the things I said before, a good bass line is in the right range when it needs to be, lands on impact points, contributes to the melody of the song, and adds body, adds that weight, adds that fullness to get that big sound if you're looking for that big sound also a way to add intensity to your song is through the bass in hip-hop adding distortion to your 808 will add um it will add a lot of intensity to the song back to the idea of organized chaos adding distortion gives the bass a certain amount of chaos that translates into intensity furthermore How you process the bass will greatly affect the feeling of the music since the bass is is an integral part. So when processing, the same with guitars, uh, how much distortion do you add? Um, How clean does the bass sound? Is, Is the attack real punchy or is it real laid back? Is there a tail? All that kind of stuff goes into the overall vibe and setting that you set as a producer or composer. Um, so with that being said, examples of masterful song, masterful bass in the song. First song we're going to do is Fair Chance by Thundercat. If you don't know, Thundercat is a, a super talented bass player. Again, I'm, I don't, I'm not a bass player, but I'd, su- I'd assume he's probably one of the best in the world because a lot of people call on him. He's, he's really good at what he does. So... The bass in this song is per- is a perfect example of bass guitar supporting the track. Um, the bass in this song really isn't doing too, too much. He is a bass player, so his theory knowledge and the way he constructs melodic lines on the bass is, is uh, masterful. The bass in this song is helping the drums keep time and it's pushing the song forward. The bass is very active, but it isn't doing the most, like it is a very good balance. In the song, the one or the the first beat in each measure, we're just gonna say on the one, that's how most musicians say it, but uh, on the one is really where the impact point is. And then in the last bar of the phrase, he emphasizes the one and the three Everywhere chords are really being fully voiced are the impact points. Notice that the bass impacts then moves. It's like a stick and move if you're fighting. It's like a typical bass walking in between impact points. The song is very, it's not very complicated because it's a ballad, 
but the execution of the song is flawless and how it gets from beginning to end is flawless as far as keeping the song moving and keeping it interesting. Next song is Press by Fred Hammond. Again, if you don't know about Fred Hammond, he's an extremely talented bass player. In addition to being one of the greatest voices that ever lived, in my opinion, and a musical genius, because he writes a lot of his stuff. Um, I'm biased, so you gotta listen to for yourself. But anyways, this song is a great example of the bass being versatile. In the verse, the bass is only is the only melodic instrument and there really isn't an impact point. The bass is just playing a line and it's really more of contributing to the rhythm section and the groove of the song. The impact points are the transitions and the places where the band plays something as a whole, like the whole band plays a specific couple of notes or a specific run or line. Uh, and in the song when they say, I press, that's like an impact point. And notice how the bass builds up to that. The bass is doing both roles mentioned before. While playing its part, it is not stepping on any toes in the rhythm section. It's a well-balanced, all-around performance. Next song is Tame Impala or Tame Impala. I'm sorry if I butcher the name. Uh, Tame Impala, the less I know, the better. This one really emphasizes the impact points and what range fills out the song. Every note that is low in the main groove or like the section A is an impact point, whether short or prolonged. In the B section, where the vibe goes from bouncy to more ballady and they start holding out notes, uh, he says, oh my love, I think, <laughs> it's kind of muffled, but I'm pretty sure he says, oh my love, and then the piano comes in. Pay close attention to the piano, Every time the piano plays chords, the bass is playing the right note under to make the most impact. I'm pretty sure he's playing the root of the chord. And that's not to be confused with the bass note because the bass can play any degree of the chord, whether it's the root, the third, fifth, seventh, eleventh, and so on. Um, so yeah, the bass note is just the lowest note played in the chord. The root of the chord is like, if you build a C chord, C would be the root. Him. All right, next song is Lessons by Young Crazy. The bass in this song is super simple. All it's really doing is supporting the chords and giving the song a little bit of body. In this song, besides how the bass supports the track, pay attention to the last bass note in the phrase. That note is important. Uh, if it was highlighted more and more uh, pronounced in the song, it would be a point of heavy tension. And that note in any key uh, will really add a lot of dramatics and it will make it very, it will give that pull to the one, the one in scale degrees that is. I can't remember the exact note that it is because I do use that note. Um, I believe it's the sixth or the seventh scale degree of a minor chord. That I believe it's the sixth, I'm pretty sure it's it's either the six or, uh, I think it's either the six or the raised seventh. It's one of those. Next song is DJ Drama's Back and Forth. Back to one of my favorite producers, Honorable C Note. The bass note, the bass does a lot in this one. It keeps the song moving, it sets the energy of the song, it provides melodic accents, and it sets up the impact points. Notice two things about the 808. Notice how the 808 has heavy distortion on it and how it affects the song. And also how the bass affects the song when the bass goes on those melodic runs. At first, the bass is playing the line and the notes are all low. Then he starts adding extra notes and playing around chords and doing, doing leaps through the scale. In fact, the leaps that he does um, is something that a lot of producers use in hip hop. It's like, a, a, it's almost like a, a, a cultural sound of hip hop. The way the bass, those almost those exact notes that he's using. Also, notice how the first few notes of the bass are ascending and it's like revving a motor. It's kind of like pushing 
the energy of the song. Like you're starting out low, and then it's like a slow build up to a march. Also, ascending and descending bass lines are cool for a high energy or a cinematic song. So that's something that you can put into your arsenal. Last but not least, um, we have Poison by Bell Biv DeVoe. This is again, another legendary bass line. This one is, the song as a whole, you can learn a lot from. And uh, I was listening to David Banner one time and he was talking about how people usually want to be happy. And you can use that fact about people to your advantage in your music. Because if you can connect to the people and give the people what they want, they'll connect with your music. Really. And that's, again, I think I've said it before, but that's the major key to all this. If that's what you're doing it for. I feel like all the best producers have a certain connection with the people, or at least their music does. I'll say that their music and their art has a connection with the people. All your best producers, artists, etc. They all affect the people a certain way. But back to Poison, in the verse, it's almost like the bass is constantly walking. The bass hesitates and lingers on the point of impact. And then in the chorus, where he goes, she's driving me out of my mind, that's when the bass goes back to kind of emphasizing chords and more of supporting the track. But that's the end for this week. Um, as always, listening list in the description and uh, let me know what I can do better. Hold me accountable, all that kind of stuff. And thank you for listening.